Welcome. In this short video, we are going to have a brief look at one of the main areas of management theory that gets tested during the exam. So we're going to have a look at a number of different areas. We're going to talk about why people study management at all, and then the work of two very, very important writers from the point of view of the syllabus and the exam, the work of Frederick Taylor and the work of Henri Fayol. So, first of all, so, first of all, why should we bother studying management at all? Why, why is it an academic discipline? There have been lots and lots of people who have studied things to do with businesses. Now, the interesting thing about management theory is that probably up until about 100, maybe 120 years ago, it didn't exist. It is one of the most recent developments out of all of the things that you study inside the ACCA. Financial accounting, debits and credits, have been around for hundreds of years. Tax has been around probably even longer. But management theory only really began about a hundred and a little, just over a hundred years ago, and is now a very, very big area of study. We do not need to know about an awful lot of management theory, but there are certain bits that are fundamental to F1. Why are we bothering to study management at all? Well, first of all, you can see organisations are becoming increasingly complex. If you go back 150, 200 years, you probably, you might have a factory but that would be about it. You might employ 30 or 40 people. If you go back far enough before we have things like steam power, even before the days of electricity, factories could not be that big. So they weren't particularly complicated. Whereas they've got more and more complicated, you may well work for an organisation that is scattered across the globe. You might well work for a multinational corporation that is involved in lots of different areas of business. So management is, to a certain extent, you have to study management because managing is more complicated than it used to be. If we are able to change the way that work is done, we can change the profits. So if we sort of make things up as we go along and hope that our organisation will be successful, the likelihood is that it will not be successful. So what we need to do is to think about what tasks are being done and how they are being carried out. Because if we can do them the right way, we can make more money. Although management theory is a very, very large topic, the first real attempt to look at any kind of management theory was what referred to as scientific management. And we'll talk about that in a minute when we talk about Frederick Taylor. Scientific management is basically all to do with the way people carry out tasks. So it's very much to do with, I am a manager, you work for me, I want you to get some particular work done, some particular tasks done. What is the best way for me to get you to do that work? So scientific management is, as it sounds like, a very scientific way of going about doing this. The ideas of Frederick Taylor then, which, I just have to wait for the PowerPoint to move. So, the ideas of Frederick Taylor are the first real attempt to try and have a system, a method, by which a manager can get the worker to do a task in the best way. Nobody up until Taylor had thought about this before. So what Taylor comes up with is that there is one single best way to perform a task. That is why it is called scientific management, because scientifically you work out what is the best way to do something. So you try different approaches and you find the best one. In the lecture, you will go through, or I will go through rather, 
the example of how Taylor actually did this. He did an experiment working in, a, in an American company. Try different approaches and find what the best way in is. Once you have worked out what is the best way to do something, train your workers and train them to do things exactly the way that they've been told to. So the workers do not get to think about what they do. They just accept what they have been told. How do you get the workers to work hard? Well, they don't, they're not going to have any kind of input to the task. They're not going to have any decisions about how they carry the task out. They're going to do what you tell them. So it's probably going to be fairly boring. It's probably going to be fairly repetitive. So how are we going to reward them? We pay them. Here is your target. If you work hard, you do it the way I tell you, you will meet your target, you will get a bonus. So we will motivate people through money. Now, this theory is over 100 years old. In fact, I think it's about, about 110 years old. So it's been around for a long time. And you might say it is outdated. Surely there is no company that would ever say to its workers, we do not want you to think. We want you to do exactly what you're told and not question it. Just do what you're told. Surely no organisations do that. I think you will find quite a lot do. I would think you will find that most fast food restaurants, prop like McDonald's, like Burger King, I suspect that they are very close to the ideas of Taylor. They may not be exactly the same, but they're not that far away from it. And there are very sensible reasons why they have to do things like that. The second writer that I just want to mention in this brief introduction to management theory is a guy called Henri Fayol, who again, we're talking over 100 years ago. He was looking at what the role of a manager is. Now, this has been expanded over the last 100 years, but this was really the first attempt to say, look, if you have a manager in a company, this is what the manager should be doing. So first of all, planning for the future. What will we be doing next month? What about two months time? What about six months time? What about next year? Remember the workers are just doing exactly what they are told today. So somebody has to think about what they need to do tomorrow and the week after that. Organizing people. I have got four different tasks that need doing. You people go and do task one. You people go and do task two. In other words, I'm organising what you're going to do. Again, the idea is that workers won't organise themselves. They'll sit around and be told what to do. So the manager has to organise them. The manager also has to command them. The manager has to tell them exactly what to do and exactly how to do it. Remember, with scientific management, the worker is not asked what they think. The worker is told what to do. So a manager has to command them. They have to tell them what to do. That obviously fits in with the organising. I have four tasks, and if I command you to do that task and you to do something else, the task will get done. Controlling. I have commanded you to do a task. I have told you how to do it, but I need to check you're doing it properly. I need to check it gets finished. So controlling behaviour is making sure that people are doing what they are supposed to. And that's obviously a large part of a manager's role, just checking that things are being done. If you were to have a look in a finance department, there are a lot of things that are going on all of the time. Bills are being paid, invoices are being sent out, cash is being collected. The manager needs to know that all of those are being done properly. So control. And the final thing that the manager has to do is coordinate the work of all the people inside their department. Now, again, a good example in a modern finance function would be we have got a group of people who are paying the bills. We have a group of people who are collecting the money from our customers. Now, obviously, there has to be some coordination between the two, because otherwise we will start paying bills when we haven't actually collected any money from our customers. So there needs to be some coordination. Which bills can we pay? Because which cash have we collected? 
So file says the manager is, th is there to do those five different things. So the final summary slide simply reminds us that management is a big area which needs study. Taylor and Fyle were amongst the first people to try and study it. Now, how could you be asked about this exam in the exam? The examiner could say, here are four different things that, are, that according to Fyle, a manager does, but one of them is wrong. So the examiner's made one of them up. Or the examiner could say, you have a worker and the worker has been told exactly what to do and how to carry out a task. What kind of management theory is being followed? And that would be the idea of Taylor. So you need to know what Taylor said. You need to know what Fyle said. And you need to know how to identify that those are the ones being used. You also need to think about when they are appropriate. Is Taylor ever appropriate in an organisation? And we mentioned earlier, with fast food chains, the answer is yes. So make sure that you're happy with that as a topic, but make sure you also understand where it can be used.